chapter 13 of Vanaparva, the return of Arjuna. As the days passed by, their impatience grew. It seemed as though they could not live another day without seeing Arjuna. The surroundings of the ashrama where they lived were very picturesque. It was fortunate for them since they spent most of their time in walking about in the forests. The trees were draped in garments of flowers of a thousand hues. For the first time during their exile, Draupadi was happy. She spent hours together looking at the flowers and trees. Her heart would dance with joy. Looking at her joy, Bhima would please her with gifts of rare flowers collected from places which she could not reach. But all the time their hearts were thinking of Arjuna and only Arjuna. It was now five years since they had last seen him. Their impatience was unbearable. Every day and every night looked like a year to them. They were wandering about the forest as usual. They saw a strange sight. The top of the mountain was lit up by a strange unearthly light. The Pandavas were staring at it. The light seemed to grow and it seemed to come nearer. They saw that it was a chariot. Arjuna was in the chariot. They were stunned for a moment. Arjuna jumped from the far chariot and rushed towards them. He fell at the feet of Yudhishthira and Bhima and Dhaumya. He saluted Lomasa and all the other rishis in the ashrama. Everyone was too upset and too excited to talk. Draupadi stood still, looking at Arjuna as though she was seeing him for the first time. Even her eyelids would not close. No one talked and everyone talked. It was a wonderful meeting. They were now five brothers. The void had been filled up. They had Arjuna with them now. The glow of deep contentment could be seen on the face of each one of them. The Pandavas received Mathali with due honour. He took leave of them and Arjuna and returned to Indra. Yudhishthira took Arjuna on his lap. He fondled him as he would a little child. They could not talk much. They were all still too excited. Arjuna gave Draupadi the gifts which Indra had sent her. They were wonderful jewels set with gems. After a while, after the beatings of their hearts had become normal, they all sat surrounding Arjuna. Just then there was a great commotion outside. Indira had come to see Yudhishthira. The Pandavas welcomed him with great honour as he descended from his chariot. He received their homage with a smile. They stood around him waiting for him to speak. He told Yudhishthira that his troubles would soon be over, that he need fear his enemies no longer, that he would rule the world gloriously. He added, Now that you are Arjuna, has been restored to you. It is time for you to descend to the plains and go back to your ashrama in the Kamyaka forest. I came to thank you personally for sparing Arjuna. He has pleased me immensely with his Vela. He will tell you about it. I am happy to have seen you all. Just a few more years and your dark days will be over. Go back now to Kamyaka. After, in, after Indira's departure, the Pandavas walked towards the ashrama. There, when they were all sitting down round Arjuna, Yudhishthira asked him to tell them about his many adventures. Arjuna was very happy to share it all with them once again. To recount an adventure is thrilling enough, but to talk about it to those who love one, who are interested in one, is wonderful. He told them about the mountain Indrakila and his penance on the slopes of the mountain. He narrated his encounter with the wild boar and the mysterious hunter. It was a thrilling narration. Yudhishthira was so proud of his brother. Bhima just sat there stroking his Arjuna again and again. His eyes were wet with joy that came off this tender reunion with his brother. He had been missing Arjuna so much. The narration went on. Arjuna told them about the visit of the other gods and their gifts to him. Then came the visit to Indra, the Urvasi episode, and then his learning dancing and dancing music, dancing and music from Chitrasena. Arjuna told them about the purpose for which he had been taken to the heavens. 
I was having a happy time there. One day Indra, my father, told me, you must do me a service. There are some Masuras by name Nivata Kavachakas. They have been giving me immense trouble. They live in the heart of the ocean. They are invincible as far as we are concerned. I want you to go and fight with them and destroy them. Indra placed a jeweled crown on my head. He said, from now on, you will be known by the name Kiriti because of this crown. The rishis in his court blessed me. Mathali brought the chariot. I left for the fight with the Nivata Kavacha, Kavachas. I reached their city after passing many beautiful spots on heaven and earth. The people there thought that Indra had come once again to fight with the Nivata Kavachas. They came out of their city when they heard the blasts from my conch. My challenge was taken up by them. The war was on. These Asuras seemed to be specialists in fighting, with magic to help them. Their Maya was too much for me to combat. This was in the beginning. But, but later, I could tackle it. I used the Astra called Mohini, which was too much for them. I overpowered them all. They had to abandon their Maya tactics and fight openly. They were very good fighters, but I had the divine Astras to help me. I aimed the Vajra the personal weapon of Indra at these Asuras and they were overcome by that. The Vajra struck like lightning. Their Kavachas were shattered to pieces. The Nivata Kavachas looked like fallen mountains. So well did I fight the Mathali, so well did I fight that Mathali praised me immensely. He said that he had never seen such a fight before. After killing the Nivata Kavachas, I entered their city. It was very beautiful. There is no other word for it. None to describe the richness, the splendor and the magnificence of the city. I was surprised to see so much beauty. I asked Mathali how the city became so rich. Amaravati was not so beautiful. Mathali told me that it had been the city of Indra formerly, but it was taken away from him by the Nivata Kavachas who had pleased Brahma by their penance. They became invincible. The Devas could not do anything to them, thanks to the boon of Brahma. That was why my father wanted me to go and kill them. I am a mortal and not a Deva. We returned to the city of Indra, Amaravati. On the way back, we saw a floating city. It was a wonderful sight. Watching my astonishment, Mathali said, Arjuna, the city is called Hiranyapuri. It is now owned by a woman called Puloma. She had several sons called Kalakeyas. With them she lives in this city. By the boon again of Brahma, these Asuras also have become immune to death by Devas. You have to fight them and destroy them as you did the others. We proceeded towards the city. I challenged the Kalakeyas to fight with me. They were not used to being challenged. They were so secure, but now they came out. The fight was on once again. I find, I found it very hard to fight with them, but I had the Astra called Pashupata. I used it. It destroyed the entire host of the Kala chaos. We returned to Amaravati. Indra welcomed me with a great joy. Mathali recounted to him the fight on both occasions and he praised me and my prowess. Indra embraced me and blessed me. I felt so proud of myself. Indra said, You have done me a great service by killing these Kalakeyas and the Nivata Kavachas. I am very pleased with you. Your brother Yudhishthira is indeed very fortunate in his brothers. With you beside him, he need have no worry about the future. The Kauravas are as good as dead. Indra gave me an armor which is impregnable. I spent a very happy time with him. After some time, he told me, The time has come when we must part. Your brothers and Draupadi are eager to see you. Years have passed by since they lent you to me. I must now return to Yudhishthira, what he was pleased to lend me. Indra asked Mathali to bring his chariot. I took leave of my father and Chitrasena and all the rishis in the courts in the court of Indra. I came here with great speed to meet you. I am now happy. 
not all the pleasures of heaven can equal the joy I am now having in meeting you after all these years. They stayed in the Badari Ashrama for many more days. The very mountains looked different to them now that Arjuna was there with them. They showed him all their favorite spots. They had a wonderful time there, but they had to think of the future. They decided that the time had come when they should return to the Kamyaka forest. Time had passed very quickly for them. The dreadful number 12 had now diminished to 2. They had spent 10 years in exile. Bhima, Nakula, Sahadeva and Arjuna approached their brother Yudhishthira with a suggestion that they should now remember their dear cousin Duryodhana. Bhima said, Yes, brother, it is time we remember the terrible oaths we have taken. It is time we think of that sinner Duryodhana. This is the eleventh year of the terrible exile which he has imposed on us. We must finish two years more. The one year when we have to live in disguise looms before me. They must now have forgotten us as they would be as would a bad dream, since we have been away from their neighborhood for five years. They are living in a fool's paradise. They may even be thinking that you have renounced the world and taken up the role of a rishi on the slopes of the Himavan. It is but right that we should descend from this beautiful Gandha Madana mountain and go back to the Kamyaka forest as Indra told us. We must remind Duryodhana that the Pandavas who had gone to the Himalayas have returned after receiving Arjuna. Our dear uncle would have learned from his excellent spies about the achievements of Arjuna. It will frighten them if we go back to the plains. Let them not think you and your brothers have renounced the world and decided to stay in Badari Ashrama. Our return will tell them that the four brothers of Yudhishthira have not forgotten their oaths. It is hard to think that we have to leave this beautiful spot. We have spent the happiest years of the exile here. It was so unlike an exile. Such is the charm it has exerted on us. Draupadi was very happy here. This is the only place where I saw her smile. But, my lord, we have to go. Three years more and we will see you, lord of the world. Balarama, Satyaki and Krishna are waiting impatiently for the end of these dreadful days. Let us go back to the place. Let us go back to the plains. Jai Shri Krishna. Krishna Panamastu. Chapter 14 Vanaparva Nahusha, the Fallen God The Pandavas set out on their journey to the plains. They took leave of everyone in the ashram and its neighborhood. The parting from the great mountain was the most painful part of it. They looked back again and again at the grand mountain called Gandhamadana. Lomasa went back to Amaravati after wishing them well. Yudhishthira was very sorry to let him go. He had been very happy in his company. He had learned so much from him. The Pandavas crossed the famous Prasravana mountain. Prasravana mountain. They came to Kailasa. They felt as though they had met an old friend. They reached the ashrama of Vrusha Parva. They spent some time there. It was very pleasing to stay there. One day, Bhima had gone out hunting. He was wandering here and there. Suddenly, he came upon a big python. It was unbelievably huge. He had never seen the like of it before. Before he could realize that he was in danger, the python grabbed him. The moment it touched his body, Bhima felt all his strength ebbing away. The python would itself round him and would not let him go. All his immense strength was of no avail against the powerful grip of the python. He was amazed at the strength of this worm. Bhima said, Who are you? What do you intend to do with me? I am Bhima the Pandava. I am the younger brother of Yudhishthira. I have tackled lions and many tigers and elephants. I have been able to kill them all effortlessly. But you amaze me. What special strength is this of yours that can defy even me? The python, holding him firm 
with its coils said, I am hungry. It is just my good luck that you came at the correct moment. As for my identity, it is a long story. I am a great king. Because of a curse, I am here on this earth in this form. I am waiting for my release. The python paused for a moment. Then it continued its story. The name of the name of King Nahusha must have reached your ears. I am Nahusha. I was drunk with power. In my arrogance, I insulted the sage Agastya. He cursed me to stay on this earth in the form of a python. He hurled me down from the heavens and I have been here since how long I know not. I was spentinent. Sage Agastya said, you must stay on the earth for a very long time. In course of time, King Yudhishthira of the lunar race will be your saviour. I have lost my old memory. I remember only this. The sage said that this king would be able to answer all my questions on ethics, that he would come when I have in my coils the strongest man on earth. You are perhaps the strongest man on this earth and the brother of Yudhishthira. Perhaps the time of my release has come. Look at my fate. I like you and yet I have to kill you, though I do not want to. I have to do it because it is part of my curse. Bhima was touched by the words of Nahusha. He was sorry for the fallen monarch. He said, I am not in the least angry with you. I am only sorry I have to die like this. I, have ho I had hoped to die like a Kshatriya and not like a beast. I am not sorry to die, but I am sorry to leave my brothers now, when they need me so. They are almost my hostages. They depend on me to win the war for them, war which is imminent. There is Arjuna, of course. He is my next brother. He is now a past master in all the arts of war. He has obtained all the divine astras from the God. It is no matter if I die. My brother can still be lord of the world. My Draupadi and my mother will miss me. My brothers who are devoted to me will mourn my death. I am sorry to leave them all and die. I am not afraid of death, but I hate to die before fulfilling my promise to Draupadi that I would break the thigh of Duryodhana and that I would drink the blood of Dushasana. It is no matter. We cannot defy fate. Bhima was clasped firmly in the coils of Nahusha. He could not move. Nahusha too did not want to kill him. He had to. He was trying to make up his mind to do the distasteful task. Yudhishthira saw several ill omens. He asked everyone where Bhima was. Draupadi told him that Bhima had gone out hunting. Since a long time had passed, Yudhishthira became worried. He set out in search of Bhima. Following his footsteps and seeing the broken shrubs and torn branches, he knew the path which Bhima had taken. He went far and all on a sudden, he saw Bhima caught in the coils of a tremendous python. Yudhishthira's heart almost stopped beating. He was horrified at the sight. He summoned up his failing courage and approached the two, one caught in the coils of the other. He asked Bhima, My child, what has happened to you? How did you get caught like this? Could you not extricate yourself? Bhima told him everything, how his strength was of no avail. Yudhishthira addressed the python, I do not know who you are. I see only your strength. You can be no ordinary snake. No one has been able to withstand the strength of my brother. I am his elder brother Yudhishthira. Please tell me what food you want. I will bring you anything you like. Only please release my brother. He is very dear to me. Nahusha replied, I am Nahusha. Yudhishthira at once prostrated before him. The name of Nahusha, his ancestor, was a famous name. He was an inmate of the abode of Indra. Nahusha's name was a byword on the earth. He was now a python. Yudhishthira could not believe his ears. Nahusha told him about the curse of Agastya and about his promise that Yudhishthira would release him from the curse. He said, My only chance of release is now. I have your brother's life in my hands. If you will answer all my questions on ethics, I will release your Bhima and you can release me from the curse. It was a strange situation.
Yudhishthira had to answer questions on ethics when his brother's life was at stake. So be it, said Yudhishthira. I will try to answer all your questions as best as I can. He prayed to his father to protect his mind and said, I am ready to answer your questions. Nahusha asked him very interesting questions. The first was, what is the definition of a Brahmin? A Brahmin, said Yudhishthira, is one who has three qualities, truthfulness, generosity, sympathy, a dislike for creality and a capacity to do tapas. This is a Brahmin and no one else. I repeat, a Brahmin, said Yudhishthira, is one who has three qua- these qualities, truthfulness, generosity, sympathy, truthfulness, generosity, sympathy, a dislike for creality and a capacity to do tapas. This is a Brahmin and no one else. Nausha, what is supreme knowledge? Yudhishthira, Brahmin, in that there is no misery or happiness. Both look alike to the one who knows. Hence, when one has attained supreme knowledge, he will never be unhappy. Nahusha put similar questions on the order of society, on Varnashrama, division into four castes and other important points of behavior and codes of living. The answers of Yudhishthira were sharp and correct, but one could also see the humility, the extreme humility of the man in the matter in which he, f- in the, the man in the manner in which he framed the questions. But one could also see the humility, the extreme humility of the man in the manner in which he framed the questions. Yudhishthira never said, this is the answer to your question. He said, in my opinion, this seems to be the most satisfactory answer. One feels that one can borrow a leaf from the book of this king and learn to give opinions in a gentle and tactful manner, never offending the hearer. It was a great art which Yudhishthira had mastered, the art of gentleness, the desire not to hurt anyone, not even with his words. Nahusha was pleased with this scholar and saint. He said, you are a great man, greater than all the wise men I have met so far. I am happy to release your brother. He is free from my coils. Having known you, how can I kill your brother? Yudhishthira was very happy to realize that Bhima was free. He was happy too to have met this wise man. While they had been talking, Yudhishthira had almost forgotten that Bhima's life was at stake. The many questions of the king were so interesting and fascinating that Yudhishthira was enjoying himself thoroughly. Now Yudhishthira wanted to ask many questions of the wise Nausha, questions which, which he gladly answered. Time passed too soon for both of them. There appeared a chariot in the sky. It touched the earth and came to where they were. King Nahusha cast off his serpent skin and assumed the majestic form that was his before the curse. He ascended the chariot after bidding adieu to the brothers. A few moments and the chariot had gone beyond their sight. The two brothers embraced each other and they returned to the ashrama with their minds full of this strange experience. The Pandavas had spent almost a year in the ashrama of Vrishapar 1 and on the slopes of Prasravana Hill. Prasravana Hill. They resumed their journey to the plains. They, tra- they travelled fast. They reached the river Saraswati. They crossed the river and reached Dvaitavana. It was their old dwelling place. It was there that Vyasa had come to them and asked Yudhishthira to send Arjuna to the north where he could perform tapas and please the Lord Shankara. It all seemed so far away now. They had travelled a long distance of time. They had finished 11 years of the exile. Just one year had to be spent in the forest, one year more in disguise and then they were free of this dreadful exile. They were all most happy. They did not want to think of anything else. They were all thinking of only one thing, war. War that was soon to be fought between the Pandavas and the Kauravas. Bhima's face was clearing up gradually and the cloud had lifted. He appeared to be more cheerful. So passed the time for the Pandavas.
श्रीकृष्णार्पणमस्तु